Does that sound mean anything for my woodworking? Well, I'll talk about it in this video. This is the half inch router arbor for my shopsmith system. This end slips over the shaft and tightens down with this set screw. And then in this end, you insert the half inch router bit and tighten down these two set screws. Or if you need some exposure, you may only be able to tighten down one set screw onto the shaft. That's a little bit different than a normal collet, which is one of these expanding metal cylinders. Now Shopsmith sells this for use in the speed increaser. I don't think it would necessarily work well in this arbor, but for demonstration purposes, it would slip in to the end, and then now you have a smaller hole for the quarter inch bits. And as the outer ring would tighten down, it would compress this area around the shaft. I think one advantage to the expanded metal shaft system versus this system is that as you're compressing this, as long as there's not any debris or hangups in there, the shaft would be centered in the collet. Whereas with this system, you may have just a little bit of play left and right. And as you drive the screws in, you would be driving the shaft to one side of the arbor and that could create just a small amount of vibration in the bit. Now, the closer the match or the better the fit of the shaft to the hole, the less offset you're gonna get when you tighten those screws. So, how good a fit is the shaft to the hole? That's where I like using the pop test. First up, I'll test this bit from Rockler. I'll take three measurements per bit. 98.4, 98.9, 101.2. As you can see, the faster I pull it, the louder it can get. So I am trying to pull this at a consistent rate. Next, I'll do this bit from Freud. 97, 102.3, 99.1. Now I'll do this bit from CMT Orange, 97.8, 97.9, 99. So really, all three of these bits produced about the same noise level. Let me try to explain with some diagrams. Consider this cross section of the router bit arbor. We have the shaft of the machine, inserted into the arbor, and then also a router bit inserted into the arbor, and these represent the set screws. If I were to pull the router bit out, and there were a good seal between the edge of the router bit and the inside of the arbor, that would create a low pressure area here in this cavity. But if we have air gaps here, as the router bit is pulled out, air will leak in and fill this area with air before the bit exits the end of the arbor. But if there's a good fit, very little air leaks in as it's being pulled out. And when it finally gets to the end, air rushes in in a big way, lots of air, and it creates our pop. So my theory is that the louder the pop, the better the fit between the edge of the router bit shaft and the edge of the router bit arbor. So if we have a really good fit, that means as the set screws are tightened down, there'll be very little movement in this direction, and the more centered the bit will be, the more true it'll run, and the better quality of cut I'll get. So now I can show you an example of a poor fit. This is a Harbor Freight drum sanding kit, and it comes with these half inch shafts. They're of course intended to go into a drill chuck, but I like to use them in my router bit arbor. And if I put that in here, you can see that there's quite a lot of play. So if I were to tighten these set screws down, it would push the shaft slightly this way, and this system would run out of true. Now, on a drum sander, that's not as big a deal as a router bit, in my opinion. Um, this setup actually works just fine. But let me show you the pop test. You can hear that there's very little noise. And in fact, I have to pull it really fast to get any sound at all. But I do get some noise out of it, so it's not terrible. But I don't think I would trust that fit for a router bit. Well, that's it for this video. I had fun looking at those router bits, and I hope to see you in the next one.